just one press of this button, I'm connected to the Life Alert Center, where I can get the help I need, even when I cannot reach a phone. With Life Alert, I'm never alone. Call 1-800-636-3041 for your free Life Alert brochure. That's 1-800-636-3041. Call now. Tomorrow, America's conversation will start here with a recap of the results from New Hampshire. Morning Joe, tomorrow 6 to 9 a.m. on MSNBC. Want to know why we don't have enough economic growth in this country? Because the middle class doesn't have the disposable income that they used to have. They're feeling the pressures of health care, pension, just keeping their job. And all the Republicans talk about is more tax cuts for the wealthy. We can't raise taxes on the job creators. Really? Where are the jobs? Tonight in New Hampshire, NBC projects that Mitt Romney is the winner of the New Hampshire Republican primary. In second place, Texas Congressman Ron Paul. At this point, with 24% of the vote, this is with 71% of the vote counted. Mitt Romney at 38, Ron Paul at 24. John Huntsman in third place tonight with 17% of the vote. Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich fighting it out for fourth place, each with about 10% of the vote right now. And Rick Perry well behind at just 1%. Let's check in with our NBC News political director Chuck Todd who's been looking at the calculus being made by some of those non-winning candidates tonight who are nevertheless deciding to stay in the race. Chuck? Well, Rachel, I've talked to both uh, the Huntsman and Gingrich campaigns about this very issue, right? And the Gingrich campaign, obviously, they made this decision. They're, it's South Carolina, a bus for them. They got the big donor, the big donation, Sheldon Adelson, uh, the casino mogul out in Vegas, to give the big, uh, the big money to an alternative super PAC for them to go after Romney. So they, they had made this calculus. They, they didn't care where they finished here in New Hampshire. But Huntsman was interesting, and in talking with their strategists, they say this, getting the third place means maybe they, they, they think it's important for them to go to South Carolina because even if they only get 10%, if they can help deny Romney victory in South Carolina, it stretches the race, goes to Florida, a place maybe Huntsman does a little bit better, but does the same thing, denies Romney victories. The whole strategy now for the Gingrich campaign, for the uh, Huntsman campaign, is actually the same, deny Romney victories. And if they can do that, then maybe they can stretch it out, maybe they find out Romney might have a gl uh, more of a glass jaw than maybe he does. I think we're going to find out in the next 10 days whether he does have a glass jaw or not. But that's the strategy. Stay in the race. And in Huntsman's case, he's not looking at winning any of these states. He's simply looking at denying Romney victories. And so he hopes to be pulling votes from Romney's left, Rachel. It's interesting. We are starting to see that, I think, from a lot of the different candidates right now. The idea is to stick around in case Romney face plants. Stick around in case something happens to Mitt Romney or something is there, done to Mitt Romney to take him out. Right. Still be in the race when that happens. Yeah, they're all the, you know, break glass in case uh, candidate implodes candidates, <laughs> right? And the, the little uh, little elephants break the glass. Here I am, you know. And, and the fact is, if you're a huntsman, you see everybody else has moved up and down, moved up and down. He's still waiting for his moment, so uh, maybe the, the point is if he stays in long enough, something happens. Well, let me ask you one last question, Chuck. And you, you look at uh, Rick Santorum, John Huntsman, Newt Gingrich, Rick Perry, who has not been a factor in New Hampshire, but who will be a factor in South Carolina. All of these candidates who not only have their own campaign resources, but have access to quirky billionaires who may or may not be their right. dad, who may or may not want to give them money uh, to right. carpet bomb in the next couple of states. Is there any difference in strategy from any of those four toward Mitt Romney, or are they all on board with the Mitt Romney corporate raider attack that we've seen Newt Gingrich play up so much in the last couple of days? No, they actually have different strategies. I mean, Santorum, you saw, he's not going to go there. He's not going to touch it. I think Santorum's strategy is pretty clear. Play up his uh, cultural conservative credentials in South Carolina. Hope that the mud between Gingrich and Romney that gets exchanged creates a factor that we've seen a lot of times in multi-candidate fields, which is candidate A attacks candidate B, candidate B attacks candidate A, and candidate C ends up winning the primary or winning that election. So I think we're going to see a straightforward Santorum strategy that way. But yes, I think Perry and Gingrich seem to be double-teaming that, 
And then you've got, of course, what we talked about early, earlier, uh, the Romney-Paul sort of uh, non-aggression pact, if you will, and Paul even defending Romney against these charges. That's helpful to him at some point because, you know, anytime you can have a surrogate pushback rather than having to do it yourself, it's always better. But they are all in this sort of deny Romney victory strategy if they ever want to find their way back. And at some point, they're going to turn on each other. Newt Gingrich told me today, I said, so what, you know, I said, when you just do the simple math in South Carolina, if you and Santorum split conservatives 50 50, Romney wins with somewhere between 35 and 40 percent. And uh, Gingrich said to me, you know what, let's see what happens early next week. Let's see how these ads hit, and maybe conservatives will start consolidating around him. He thinks, of course, Santorum is hoping it's the other way around. But at some point, you know, there's a big meeting this weekend of a lot of social conservatives, movement conservatives that don't want Romney as the nominee. And their goal is to try to figure out if they're can consolidate between behind one of the two, Gingrich or Santorum. Maybe that happens this weekend in favor of one over the other. And with 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 Mitt Romney having now won in Iowa and New Hampshire, anybody who really wants it to not be Mitt Romney, these are desperate times. And if there are desperate yeah. measures available, now's the time to to go for them. Uh, Chuck Todd, thank you for this. We'll be checking back, back in with you again. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go to Chris Matthews uh, in Manchester, New Hampshire. He's with Howard Feynman and others who have been sort of reporting with uh, various campaigns and their reactions to tonight's results. Chris. Great, Rachel. You know, Howard, it seems to me we got three guys now running in this race that are behind and have to do something magical to pick up. Let's start with the most fascinating, Ginrich. Tonight, no attack in his uh, speech tonight on the man he's been attacking, Romney. Right, What's right. that about? Well, I think that's significant, partly because I know that some friends of his, former members of Congress, have told him to cool it on the looting thing. They say, you're making a pry of yourself in the party. And even though the Mitt Romney people claim, bring it on, and we want to get this debate over now so we don't have to deal with it in the fall, you know, they don't like it. They, they definitely don't like it. But Mitt has a, Newt has a choice to make. By the way, I've covered him for many years. I've never seen him look that deflated and unhappy. You know, as he, tonight. As tonight. Now, he cried out in Iowa because he was tired. Here, he just looked like a guy who was being denied the opportunity that, that he wanted. He started that speech with I, 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 I. It's all about his feeling thwarted and defeated, and you saw that. But the problem he faces is if he goes down the looting road, what John Sununu, the governor, called the socialist road, he really does at some point paint himself into a corner in the party, and that's what some of his friends are telling him tonight. I understand. But can he forgive what was done to him in personal terms in Iowa in that blanketing no. campaign basically, basically on behalf of Romney? No, can he do no, he can't. But the emotional choice he faced, the political choice he faces, does he continue trying to exact revenge uh, and get some kind of satisfaction out of that? In the, nobody thinks he's going to win the nomination at this point. Or does he stand down and, and avoid really becoming a, a, a truly, you know, attack figure from everybody else within the Republican Party, which is quite possible. Fair to assume, though, if he doesn't go on the heart attack, he will lose the battle to Romney. He only has one choice, go that's hard his, or that's lose. That's right. That's his only way. Okay, the so only way is Santorum? to destroy him. What does Santorum have a chance of taking him down, Romney? Well, having talk, I interviewed Rick Santorum the other day. He told me that he'd changed. He'd, he'd been changed by his 17-point defeat in Pennsylvania the other year, where he really was a negative attack dog. It didn't work. He got clobbered. And also, you know, the store family story, the fact that he's got this uh, uh, daughter who he cares very much sure. about and all that. And he's tried very hard, maybe for tactical as well as personal reasons, not to be an attack dog in this campaign. You know, he was known as Senator Slash. He's put that aside. And if you've noticed, he's been very, very wary, for the most part, of attacking any of the other candidates. He thinks he's setting a different tone. Uh, whether he can keep doing that or not in South Carolina, I don't know. But I think his, his hope, as, as small a hope as it may be, is to be the guy who's not attacking the other candidates and somehow benefit and have that weave into his culture conservative traditionalist values. Is he already That's gunning? his line. I always said the sense that Santorum was really gunning for a cabinet post. That he never, <laughs> that he may have done well in yeah. Iowa, but he never thought he'd do that well. Right. And he's really trying to sort of uh, hug up against Romney rather than attack yeah, him. Yeah, you, if you've noticed, he's given up, he's he's just shoot almost every chance he had to yeah, attack sorry, Romney. One he, last yeah. chance. Uh, we don't think, I guess most people, I shouldn't say we on behalf of anyone, but Ron Paul does not look like a candidate for winning the Republican nomination, but is simply a person who wants to get a message across to the party at the convention, perhaps either in a platform or probably more forcefully in the words of uh, the eventual winner. Uh, what's his goal now going into well, South Carolina? Well, his goal, I just, I just got, you know, done emailing.
trailing with Jesse Benton, who's his main guy. He was there right next to Ron Paul and is practically a member of the family. He claims, at any rate, that they've raised $10 million, at least $10 million, in the month of January alone. They're already organizing in all the states down the road. They're going for maximum delegates they can get, maximum leverage they can get, and then there will be a moment. Right now, Romney and Paul are sort of in a, uh, you know, they're being nice to each other, not attacking each other. Paul defended him on free enterprise and so on. There will be a reckoning at some point. Ron Paul has refused to say that he will stay in the party, that he will even support the nominee. He'll go with as many delegates as can, he can, get whatever he can out of the Republican Party, and I think Romney's big diplomatic challenge of the, of the next many months is to keep him in the party. I don't think it'll work. I think ultimately Ron Paul will go off on his own and will have the money to finance his own this independent time, this Yes, time. his people, look, we've been at his rallies. His people want no compromise. And he will lose his credibility with all the people that he spent years and years uh, winning the support of if he stays in the party. I think in the end he will leave. My belief is with you because yeah. I believe there's an opportunity to the right of Romney. Somebody yes. will take it yes. in Especially this general with election. Romney. Yes. Anyway, thank you, Rachel. It's a desultory night for those things that the Republican Party was going to go through some eruptive change tonight. It just looks like on course, it's the next guy's turn. It's Romney's turn. It's been his turn, just like it was with Reagan and Bush Sr. and Dole and McCain, the relentless tyranny of the tedium of the Republican Party. They give the job to the guy whose turn it is. Don't look for excitement in the grand old party. The tyranny of the tedium. That was amazing. Yes, I, oh, I, it is it's so desultory. I'm sorry. But I will say, though, if in terms of looking for an eruption, what Howard Feynman just said right now about what he expects from the Ron Paul candidacy going forward and about the beliefs yeah. and desires of the Ron Paul true believers, believers, put that in a bottle and keep it on the shelf. That is a time capsule of what's going on right now in this campaign, and that may become very, very, very important many months yes, down will. the road. Howard, I think that was very yes, important. Uh, we're going to take Thanks. a quick break, but when we come back, uh, we've got some news out of what's happening in South Carolina. Obviously, with nobody getting out of the race tonight, Tonight, and with, with Mitt Romney having locked up now Iowa and New Hampshire, South Carolina has never been more important. What is going on in terms of spending in South Carolina and power brokers in South Carolina who can make all the difference in that state? New news on that coming up next. story of how a shipping giant can befriend a forest may seem like the stuff of fairy tales. You and me and the big old trees, la, la, la. But if you take away the faces on the trees, take away the pixie dust, la, la, la. take away the singing animals la, la, la. and the charming outfits, take away the sprites and the storybook narrator you're left with more electric trucks, more recycled shipping materials, and a growing number of lorry mission planes, which still makes for a pretty enchanted tale. Oops, forgot one. Sustainable solutions. FedEx, solutions that matter. You know, when I grow up, I'm gonna own my own restaurant. I wanna be a volunteer firefighter. When I grow up, I wanna write a novel. I wanna go on a road trip. When I grow up, I'm gonna go there. I wanna fix up old houses. At AARP, we believe you're never done growing. I wanna fall in love again. Discover what's next in your life. Get this free travel bag when you join at aarp.org slash join today. In blind taste tests, even Ragu users chose Prego. Prego? But I've been buying Ragu for years. I wonder what other questionable choices I've made. Choose taste. 
Juice. Black mold. Two ugly words no homeowner wants to hear. Not only does it pose serious health threats, it's also a nightmare for home buyers or sellers. Mold Matters is a team of Northern Michigan's most respected mold cleanup specialists and inspectors. Certified and fully insured with years of experience, we bring peace of mind to bleak situations. Take real estate objections away before they're a problem at moldmattersinc.com or call 933-MOLD. Remember, mold matters because life matters. Ever since we got Charter Internet, Timothy's been acting a little... Odd. Odd. 